Hi, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another MacMira on live tasting show. Tonight, we'll be tasting Deadly Decos that Simmer and Jolan handpicked at the distillery last year. Joining me tonight, we have Richard McKean. Hello, Richard. Hello. And Martin Simpson, also known as Simmer, owner and uh, managing director of Norway's. <laughs> Hello, Hello Simmer. Hello, how are you? Good at you. Richard, you know Simo. We went to secondary school together. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Um, I've known Richard for the best part of 20 plus years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What a small world. It's a very, very small world. <laughs> Nora. And welcome to everybody on, on the on the chat. Guys, we can see you there. Um, Kate and Carol and, and Gareth and, and Anders. Thank you. Keep your questions coming in. We'll uh, we'll try to answer as many as we can. Um, we're gonna have a great show tonight. We've got some great whiskies, um, but yeah, we'll we'll get back to you as, as as we go along. And if anybody wants to to ask a question, please put it up there, and uh, we'll come back to you. So, Simo, tell us about how you got started in in the industry. I mean, how how did you gravitate towards more? Um, God, um, I was so I used to a restaurant in Soho, the Twelve Islands, years and years ago, um, and uh, Milroy used to buy my whiskey. Um, and I think uh, on many occasions I used to basically just go into the back office and get very drunk. And it was really fun with Angus, who actually used to work for me now, actually. Um, and one day I was just about half a bottle of whiskey in, and I was like, you know what, I really want to buy this place. And I remember the exact whiskey drink. It was an independently bottled whiskey, uh, but a half and 89. And um, I was like, you know, looking at it, in single cask, uh, limited releases. It was interesting. Didn't taste like a normal Bernard Harbin. I was like, why don't we do more of this? And this is five, six years ago when the indie bottle was small. It wasn't big. And um, I said, oh. and uh, literally just decided there and then sold my restaurant from there and uh, brought Milroy's. Uh, why? Why Milroy's? I mean, you could have you could have bought any any restaurant. So why Milroy's? Um, Milroy's. It's the. Um, uh, Milroy's for me, it's kind of like, it's the history of Milroy's. So Milroy's, they've been started going since uh, 1964. They were the first whiskey specialist in London. Uh, okay. These guys were the guys that brought, so Jack and Wallace Milroy, uh, back in 1964 when they started Milroy's, these are the first guys to bring single malt scotch to London. Um, okay. Before the 60s, in fact, the first commercially sold single malt was actually in 1947. It hasn't been around for that long. So these guys used to drive up in their vans to Scotland, say, look, we'll sell your blends, but you have to Juice single malt for us. Only about 12 at a time. And these are the guys that revolutionized the single malt market. So it was kind of like I fell in love with whiskey, loved whiskey, loved, then just fell in love with the story of Milroy's, what they did. It was kind of like, you know, they're in the middle of Soho. It's it's whiskey about the bullshit, basically. That's what it is. You know, it's basically people come there, they drink, no matter where you're from, who you are, you get to come. And it's all about the service and the staff that we have in there. And, you know, being able to decipher thousands of thousands of whiskeys. So 300 whiskeys on our bar, no menu, about 400 in the shop as well. But it's all about us to sort of decipher this palette. So then, okay, right, guys, this is, you know, what do you normally drink, what do you normally eat? It's sort of finding the right whiskey. And that's what the Milroy's brothers did. And it was their ethos that I fell in love with. Um, and just, you know, I wanted to carry on. And there wasn't really much like that in the way. You know, so now, you know, I just kind of got back to what it was in the 60s and 70s. It's just a good place to enjoy whiskey. Yeah, and the rubbish that sits around it, you know. Milroy, isn't there some isn't there some history that one of the brothers was a gold mine in South Africa? He was, yes, as Wallace Milroy. He was actually very happy. Uh, yeah. Jack was. He was working at Kettner's down the road because uh, Kettner's is what's a restaurant owned by Sir House now. It used to be a wine shop. Um, he owned that, and it was actually the landlords of Less Cargo. Because they used to um, grow snails in the basement of Les, for Les Cargo at Milroy's. So, and the the guy that owned Les Cargo, well, look, I have this building that they produce snails for us in the basement. I uh, said, so look, you know, I will buy this for you if you want to start doing whiskey. And there's a really famous picture of the first Christmas they were open in 1964. Um, and there's a queue round the corner of the block. It's insane. That's amazing. Now, you were talking about them great <laughs> snails downstairs. Is <laughs> Is that where you built those bunkers? You actually hand built the bunkers in the vault. 
No, so they were existing. So below, you can see that via the A board there. Below on the well, the A board sat on those yeah. glass squares. So those glass squares used to be hatches, and what you know, coal trucks used to go down. Uh, hatches live up. They used to pour coal down there, and they used to and they store them in these vaults. And um, and so when I went down there, we you know we had the whiskey shop upstairs, and you know my last business was a restaurant and cocktail bar. So I thought I'd put a cool cocktail bar downstairs, and then we built the inside of that vault, like the inside of a whiskey barrel, essentially. Um, yeah, it was just me and a couple of laborers for about two months, just knocking away and building stuff. And uh, one of my directors, uh, um, sort of nephew, he was a chippy. He came and gave me a hand, and we built the whole place in about two months. <laughs> Amazing! And you built the bar down there as well, hand built it. Yeah, everything's hand built by us. Um, so you know, the units upstairs, the bookcase door that leads down there. Um, also, Who thought of that? Uh, I was bored, and I never built one. So <laughs> I just, um, everyone what a great thinks, idea. It's everyone thinks a bit potty, like, oh no, it's like, uh, what is this? It's not purely the only reason that bookcase door is there, it's because I've never built one. Uh, I come from generations of builders in my family, so I used to build furniture. Um, and I was like, I've never built one, so I wanted to build one. So that's the reason the bookcase door is there. We had to weld up a huge frame for it um, and then hang this heavy, you know, it's, it's a thick fire door about that thick. It took three of us to hang the door. I know, it weighs a ton. It, it's about half a ton it weighs, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know, do you know every time I have guests and they come to the UK and, and they say they want to go to a pub, I take them there. I've never seen anything like that in my life before. It's, it, it's, it blows me away. It still does, you know. It's, I've, it's been great. In, uh, I've been in Montreal twice when there's people asking where the bathroom is and you say, yeah, you go down <laughs> to, through the bookcase and they get to the end, they don't believe you. They don't. They think you're making fun of them if they push this bookcase. Yeah, over the bar, a lot of people come out. It's at the back. <laughs> They, they, they sit and they go into the taste room they look at the thing where is it and then i think it's the most instagram thing in my in any of my business is that door you just get people coming in during the day just to ask to take a picture in front of it yeah <laughs> you know? i can believe it okay. so so you started millways in Sahara in what 2015 um yes yeah, so i brought it 2014 20 march 2015 is when we launched um, okay. The new and revived mirror. So the mirrors brothers sold it late nineties. Rumor has it, um, you know, uh, sort of Jack left his wife um, and uh, sold it to a friend of his, Mark Rainier, who went on to start Brickladdy. Mark didn't sell it back no. to him um, because he saw the potential in it. He eventually sold it to Jared Boehm's, who were uh, a wine shop, and nothing against wine shops, but there's enough of them in this city. So, you know, I wanted to, and they were turning Milroy's into a wine shop and it was losing its history. And that's when I was like, you know what, I'm going to save my little bit of solo. And then just got some people together, brought it and just brought it back to life to what it is. And it's good to see because, you know, we, uh, uh, Wallace Forge died, but Jack's still alive. Mm. We still write letters to each other. He has no way. Still, yeah, we've got a stack of letters that we just write back and forth. That's um, insane. He sent us all his, um, like, though that's one of the older shops where he used to look like. Um, he sends us all his memoirs as well. So if you go to my new site in the Dram House, all upstairs, it's all the memoirs of Jack on the press clippings that he kept. So it's really cool. And the, the new one you're talking about is, is Spicklefields. Yeah, so Spicklefields, we just launched a new site um, end of last year. Uh, that's sort of, that's an old picture, but yeah, that's why we we're building it. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we were building this, it's basically, we took over a townhouse opposite Spitfields Market, and we wanted to take Milroy's to the next level. So it's kind of like what we do best there. So the bar has, it's a bar and a shop on the ground floor in Soho, but in Spitfields, the ground floor, it's a whiskey bar of over 1,200 bottles of whiskey. We hold the record for England, and um, it's no menu, completely curated, it took six months to curate the list. And then downstairs, we've got the cocktail bar run by Chris Tanner, who does both cocktail bars. Um, and then upstairs, we put a members club. And you've got a members club with a cigar terrace, and we've got like a 12 seats tasting room there as well. Um, so it's kind of like elevating what we did, because Soho, that's the ground floor bar you see there with the 1200 whiskey. It actually comes back on itself as well on the other side. It's um, insane. Yeah, we've got, got a few Mac mirrors in there as well, mate. You do. <laughs> you do. <laughs> I don't think it's any you missed, actually. Yeah, yeah, and it was kind of like, you know, we just want to do something. It's us on steroids. It's like, what can we do? And, you know, luckily I've got a great board and like great group of investors behind me. And they're like, cool, what do you want? And I said, look, I want to take this to the next level. This is what we're really good at. This is what I want to do. And they all backed me and it was fantastic. And um, yeah, we got to open up. Um, October last year had uh, an insane party that uh, I can sort of remember. 
I remember standing on the bar and telling everyone to leave. <laughs> but I say thank you for coming. Uh, yes, you do. But, yeah, you know, I, I, it's good fun. You know, yeah. I, I don't do things by half, you know, Michelle. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. So, so Mark, you know, I, I met you about 18 months ago and we got chatting. I mean, when I first walked into your pub, you you did, you know, you had small amounts of, of McMirror and, and over the last 18 months, you guys have really supported us. And I walked in one day and I said to you, how about owning a car? And you said, yeah, using a couple other words. And you said, yeah, let's, let's do that. And, I, <laughs> I, <laughs> and before I knew it, we were on a plane to Sweden, you know, yeah. and it was, it was, it was insane. It was really insane. I mean, we, we were trying to decide, you know, what to do. And you went like, sorry, we're going, let's just book the tickets and just go. Why Sweden? Why, why, why cask? I mean, what made you want to um, get I mean, involved? There, there's a big part of our business, which is cask. I mean, one of the uniquenesses that we have is that, you know, Mirrorways as a company is that, you know, behind the scenes, we, you know, we buy and sell casks, we do our own bottlings, but we also have the shop at the bar. So we're, you know, as a whiskey company, we're, we're completely start to finish to the end consumer. So we have this great interaction with consumers on the bar. We know what they drink, we know what they like. And so we pride ourselves that, you know, we are, you know, we're the geeks and the experts that constantly just drink whiskey day in, day out. And we have to know everything. And we, what our pride ourselves about, our, our palate, our profile, we can pick out profiles of casks and finding the right casks that people will absolutely love. And you know, that's why I fell in love with like, when you come in and your the McMahon's cask program, you know, because it's it's completely left field. You know, yeah. it's, uh, you know, I often tell people yeah. the tastings, uh, even the bottles we've got in front of us today, is that one of the things I fell in love with Mac Mirror is your cast program. It's like, sod it, fuck it, just still you want, you know. Yeah. You come in with a yeah. weird shit and I'm like, this is unreal. <laughs> 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 it was a bit like that, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. I remember your, um, what was it, a glue vine one uh, that you brought in. The um, old wine. Old wine one, yeah. I was like, this, 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 no one does this stuff. And, um, I loved it, and I was like, you know what, I want to do more of this. And then when you said let's do cast, it's like the PG thirteen version is, yeah, let's go do that. <laughs> yeah, it was insane. But I mean, you could have gone anyway. But you know, you said let's go do Black Mirror. What do you look for when you go to look for cast? Because you, I'm gonna we're gonna get to it in a minute. But you you chose some really strange casks. Yeah, it's we're not boring in what we do. We like to stand out. It, it's for us. It's. You know, we, we ignore names like, it's, you know, um, there's some big names in the industry. Everyone wants that. And, you know, one of our big thing is, uh, you know, Milroy's, it's, it's whiskey without the marketing bullshit. You know, yeah. we are here to cut through all that and just give you good liquid, regardless of where it comes from or what it is. It's just we're there to go out and find the best liquid and give it to people. So when, you know, when we went to cask and me and Jolin, every time we go up to distilleries and we pick our cask, we do the same thing every time. We basically just raid your warehouse grab a village and just <laughs> get, get very, very drunk and just basically climb over like all your Dunwich warehousing, climb over cars, trying to find the weirdest thing on the, the front of the cars and be like, oh, that looks weird and interesting. And, you know, we know from me and Jolly doing it for years, and when we go into the warehouse, we know what to look for. We know, you know, what part, when we walk into a room, where the cars are going to age best, you know, how high is the warehouse, how wide is it, air conditioned, temperature controlled, what is it, steam control? So we know just by our own sort of like history and knowledge that when we go into a house, all right, cool, PX would be very well over there. Like, that we like, you know, all of us are sharing bourbon cask up here, the size of the cask and everything. We sort of know the chemical makeup of how it's going to mature in the cask. Look at it. So we can sort of decipher in a room for a thousand casks. We go in there and go, right, we think this is going to be really good. Over here, let's have a look, see what we've got. Um, and that's what we did. And I remember going into your warehouse. It was the first warehouse and just uh, with all your smaller cars and being like, cool. And I think we opened up about 20 of them. <laughs> just uh, tasting everything. And, um, you know, if you wake up in the morning and you're like, going, okay, cool. Um, you know, me and Jolly Springs is we'll go out, we'll get very drunk in the warehouses, trying loads of samples, and we'll end up waking up with samples in our pocket. You know, with jackets still on from the night before. Wake up and think, oh, well, these must be really good samples. And then we try them sober and we're like, cool, actually, you know what? These three are the best. <laughs> You know. and, and it is a bit like it with you guys. I mean, you know, we're going to get into it, but people don't believe that this is what happened because this is exactly what happened. You know, you didn't go there to want to taste the normal casks. I mean, there's a picture of you um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> pulling the cask out of, of, of the rack that you, you, you kind of walked around and went, right, I'll have that cask and pulled it off the rack and tasted it. It, yeah. it, it, it was, I think the, the Swedes had never seen anybody come into their warehouse and kind of just take over. You know, it was like, no, we don't want that. 
No one left. Oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you are. I catch you walking out the distillery with a cask on your shoulder. You know, it's well, like. When you yeah. lose the warehouse, mate, it doesn't happen. <laughs> Good souvenir. You are. A great souvenir to have. Oh, yeah, it's great, company. mate. Um, I think, no, I'm not smoking that one. Am I smoking that? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> you were actually. Yeah. It's <laughs> about 10 whiskeys in, mate. This is what's happened. <laughs> And, it, and you know you you selected five casks and, and they're all very different and and there's a history behind we'll get into them like i keep promising we will, we will um but rich you know we we have a cast program and i've asked rich to just talk about it for people who haven't who don't know about the cast program we have a reserve cast program which Rich can tell us about and we have a ready cast program and you brought into both of those Simone. yeah we love it i mean your wish cast program and it's it's kind of like, because your smaller casks, I mean, anyone that knows anything about sort of like cask maturation, the, the bigger the cask, the longer it takes the whiskey to mature. It's, it's contact with the wood. So, of course, you know, and also climate, everything has a huge emphasis on it. So, obviously, you know, casks, Cabland are very famous for it. You know, they have, they're their top, their four floors warehouse, top floors, something like, uh, something like 40 degrees. The casks mature very quickly. Yeah. You know, an eight year old there is a similar to a, you know, a 20, 30 year old in Scotland. But same thing with a smaller cast. They mature at different. They mature at a lot quicker time. So it's that contact with the wood, and it's that contact that pulls all the flavour out. So I'm a huge fan for doing small sort of releases um, with these sort of quartz casts. But as long as something has been in there before, because you know you can get. I can go out and buy these sort of like smaller casks. But it's all about the it's the previous supply chain before that. You know, if you've got a, a stat, I think we saw a few stats in there. You know what stat was in there. You know uh, what champagne was in there. What pH was in there. What was in there. What collaborate was in there. And that's what you know. That's part of what me and Jordan will look for. So we're asking you questions all the time. Like you know, we see twenty pH casts in there. No, um, you know where do they come from? You know, mm. What what we are whereabouts? Um, the collaborate wine. I know it's uh, individual freedom. Who makes it? You know uh, all your beer casts. Who produces the beer to go into it? How long is the beer cast for? And these are the questions that we ask. And you guys sort of like. You know, we're asking the question, you're taking all the points for us, you're like, oh, it's this, 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 and we're me and Jordan's like smiles getting bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Rick, tell, tell us, tell the viewers about the reserve program, what you know, what the benefits are of having the reserve cost. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it was interesting listening to Simo then, someone that's actually been over and into the warehouses and looking at all of these things and selecting stuff. And <clears throat> what you said at the beginning, Simo, about being a bit left field and as far as cast programs go. More often than not, you just you look on a, a on a website. You can see what what's up for auction or what you can buy. And you can choose something, but you might not ever be able to try it. You've got no control over what it is. You don't know what um, what profile it might have at the end. You just have like an estimate for it. But with our program, you can choose everything from the beginning, so you can build your own cast from the ground up with the reserve program. So yeah. um, the first step would be choosing what recipe you want of the distillate. So. Do you want to have um, elegant recipe, which is unpeated, or do you want a peated whiskey? Um, so you choose the, the recipe that you want for that. And then you can choose the cask type. So we have a, a huge amount of different casks that, that can be chosen from, but things like ex-bourbon, um, Swedish oak, um, something called an anniversary cask that we do, ex-bourbon staves with virgin Swedish oak ends. And yeah. the whiskey that it produces is just, it's unbelievable. That is the, the yeah. texture of things that come with it. Um, but you choose those, so you can choose the, the recipe of the distillate, then the cask. Uh, once you've done that, you choose a name, uh, and you name your whiskey. You can name it whatever you like. Um, we'll put it onto a, a brass plaque, uh, and then that brass plaque is, is attached to the cask, so it ages with it on there. So if you ever came over to visit it, you can see your name on the plaque on the cask and um, have a little smile as you look. Yeah. Um, once that's done, so once you've chosen the recipe, the cask, and your name, um, we fill the cask and we ship it to the warehouse of your choice. And that, again, is another thing that you can choose. So all these different locations across Sweden that we've got warehouses in. So um, on top of a mountain to the northwest of the distillery, we have a um, like a sky bar with a, a small warehouse underneath it where we can age something or in the forest warehouse or where I believe the, the whiskies have come from tonight in the Bodash, if that's the correct. <laughs> 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 You're both yeah. Below seven mine. So Fifty meters below ground in these yeah. big, so not old, you know, um, dirty coal mines and things like that. These mines are sort of very well engineered. Um, we use, I believe, for testing mining equipment. So um, very well put together with things. Um, and it's just you, you drive down chain and Simo. You've obviously been there. Haven't had the the pleasure yet. But what well, I told you, just you drive down into it because it just goes on and on and on. 
and as soon as you get out of the car and, and you walk around, you just it's just like walking through, I don't yeah. know, just whiskey, just floating in the air everywhere. So um, that's an option for you. You can put a cast down there. And you can have a cast gauging in the mine. Um, one of these actually is from down there. Actually, the other two, yeah. there, but I think, uh, yeah, we've found something special actually. <laughs> so one, one, one from the Bodas mines. Where are the other two from then? Which uh, one? Was the warehouse by the distillery. Yeah, the Forest Warehouse. Okay, quite okay, lovely. Yeah. Um, so once you've got that, you chose chose the distillate cask name warehouse that you want to have it in. All of these choices that you can decide. Um, while it's aging, uh, if you're in the UK and you bought a cask. We'll come over from time to time and do cask tasting events. And you're able to track the progress of your cask as it goes. You'll have an ambassador. Someone will come over and speak to you. Um, if, if it's you or you know a friend or two, you've gone in on a cask. We'll bring samples over and you get to see how it's maturing, see how it's progressing, um, see what you think as it goes and decide you know, when you think it might be ready. Speak to the people that, um, that, you know, um, that, that are monitoring the cask as well, see what they think. And then when it's ready to go, um, it's bottled, labelled, and delivered to your door. Um, re really straightforward stuff. Um, prices, so the, the prices start at £1,460. Um, and with that, there's the only other charges. So normally when you buy a cask, there's lots of things that are an additional cost. If anyone's ever looked at it before, they just they can really, really start to add up. But with that, everything's included, apart from things that have to be determined at the time. So um at the time of bottling i mean so vat um duty uh, and then delivery will be the only other thing you ever pay for so um prices start 1460 and you're looking at approximately 430 pounds for the, the the taxes and the delivery at the time of well when you're ready to go and if it's a reverse reserve cash you're probably looking you know anywhere from four to five six seven eight years later depending on what cars you've gone for when you think it's ready to go so i think that's a really accessible price um you end up with with roughly 50 bottles give or take depending on, on yeah. the individual cask um rather than buying something that's just you know 250 liters ending up with hundreds of bottles and you don't know what it's going to be you can tailor it from the start pay a very accessible price to get into something and have your own completely unique whiskey I think that's that's really good. Well done, thanks, Rich. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody's yeah. screaming from. Yeah, we want to get on with the tasting. Thank yeah, you. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Let's do it. So, do you want to? Yeah. I mean, you go, everybody so, should have a. Basically, we sent out those samples to everybody. They've got numbers one, two, and three on it. Um, yeah. Let me taste again. We're actually going to start with number two. So we're doing things a bit differently tonight, uh, just reinventing mass apparently. So number two, um, get it, pour it in glass. You still have a glass like this, unless the DHL have been absolutely useless and decide to kick it around. I do apologize if that's the case. Um, yeah, there are some people. Oops. Yeah. Smashed. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I've had to send two to you, Rich. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's I appreciate it. Um, so guys, first one is we're going to start with number two. Now, Number two is, can you all hear me? All good? Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. So number two is the Grand Cuvée cask. So this is a champagne cask, as you can see in the pitch here, 44.1%. Now this, me and Jollyon, this is when, um, apparently people can't hear me. Can you all hear me? Thumbs up if you can hear me over there. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, can hear me. Someone comment, can you hear me? I think some people were saying it's, it's relatively hard to hear you. If you had a pair of headphones, it might be helpful. Yeah, all, you um, have a um, bit of headphones on, guys. Um, everyone all good? I'll shout as loud as I can. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so, um, guys, what we've got is essentially um, Mr. Grand Cuvée cast. Um, uh, what we've got is this basically me and Jolyon, we went down into... Um, uh god we went down to your mine so oh, yes. remember getting to this distillery and we you took us out to this um like god uh out in the middle of the forest somewhere about an hour <laughs> and a half and we drove down um about god must be about 10 minutes into this mine it like a bond feed yeah it's insane exactly so we were climbing all over the casks um and going god the fuck is this this is insane going from one room to another to another 
And me and Jolin were like, hold on a minute. We just saw, I think Jolin caught out of the corner of his eye. I saw a champagne cask. And I think we twisted you into the, um, like, trying because you weren't going to say it to us originally because you were trying to keep it for something. And I was like, just please do me a favor, sell me the champagne cask. <laughs> so the actual truth was we went down into this mine and we're walking around and there's all these, these, these tunnels full of whiskey and it's really big. And you walked around and you went, right, where's the champagne cask? I don't know how you knew about it, but you kind of got wind of it. And uh, you've twisted the, the mine manager's arm to go and fetch you some whiskey. You're like, what? Well, I'm drunk in a mine. Like, it's a 300 meter <laughs> barrel. And you <laughs> so she said to you, hold here. And she, she twaddled off, took a whole bunch of these test things and came back and said, here you are. <laughs> I remember like, uh, but you know, it's up, we got to get the best whiskey for the people, you know, everyone in this tasting here tonight, you know, all our customers, it's up to us to get the best whiskey. And uh, oh. we really dove very deep into that warehouse. Uh, I mean, we were down there for quite a while. And, yeah, we were uh, down there hours. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> luckily we, we found this champagne. Yeah, that's one of the rooms. Um, luckily, we found one of these champagne glasses from Bay, and me and Jolin absolutely fell in love with it. Um, this is a very insane whiskey, like very insane whiskey. So it's that lovely sort of like fresh citrus notes that you get on the nose, and then as, as you drink it, it really opens up. This whiskey you can sort of keep that sitting glass for a good 10, 20 minutes. It really opens up over time. It is I get um vinous notes, sort of like some spiciness to it, like herbal spiciness. Yeah, it's um, um if you let it sit on your tongue, it it really sort of the effervescence of it really gives you that it's like a masked champagne almost, it's like effervescing on your tongue. Mm. It's a beautiful taste. You know what the funny thing is of this summer? Because <laughs> there's a funny side to this. So <laughs> So he, he gets the samples, right? Now they're there to buy a 30 litre cask. They're not there to buy a 300 litre cask. Although, tasting this, you probably would have bought the 300 litre cask anyway. You say to the mine manager, we love it, and we have 30 litres. She, she, she doesn't know how to answer the question. Um, we're, I, bet the, um, I bet the accountants love that. Yeah, I mean, taking 30 uh, out of one, yeah. Shane will know me and Jolly and drunk in a mine in a warehouse. Um, there's not much stopping us. Like, when we see a good whiskey that we want, there's not much that's going to stop us getting that whiskey. You know, yeah. we kind of fell in love when you gave us that little sample. We, were, we absolutely just fell in love with it. Um, and we were like, you know what? It's that it was at the right sort of it'd been aging for just the right amount of time. For us. Um, it was dropping, like, you could tell by how much the ABV had dropped. Considering it was only down there about what six, seven years from that, um, you know, what's this? Uh, 2010, 11. So it's only down there about seven or eight years. Um, yeah. It, it had dropped to around about low 40s, and so we knew that it was sucking as much as it could out of that cask, and it was oxidising really quickly. And down there, it was so cold that you know the oxidation rate is so slow down there. And when we found this cask at the ABB, we were like, you know what? We're taking it. It's beautiful. Like this cask has just hit maturity spot on. And it was that sort of combination of things that we enjoyed like taking it. it I mean it shows you how, how um Go on, Rich. Oh sorry, Shane. Yeah, I was gonna say it just shows you how um individually a uh, a single cask can mature. So if you've got something that's gone down to 44.1% after only 10 years as well, so just every cast is going to yeah. be different. So going through as many casts as you did and then landing on this, you know you've got something special. Yeah, I mean, like I said before, like, um, you know, we, we know the geeky science side behind a lot of maturation and wood is a living, breathing thing. So you could have a uh, cast, you get about two casts out of a, a tree uh, in America. Um, you know, that expert cast, you get them in the exact same tree, make two casts, them side by side, but the exact same thing put in there. But after 10 years, they'll taste completely different. It's not really? about wood, it's a living, breathing thing. It puts it in where it's in the warehouse, how it's made in the warehouse, everything around it. You know, there might be a few knots in it, but just for some reason, pull in that flavor a bit more. It's all these little tiny things that don't make a difference over a day or a week. But when you put it over eight years, or 10 years, or 20, or 30, it makes a huge difference. 
And it's that what, that's what we're looking for. You know, it's the net flip on for it's just a cut and X this. It's like, right, cool. What is this cast done? Mm. How is this cast gauging? Where is it? You know, what's it doing? And me and Colin, that's what we look for when we go to our house. Well, we saw that and you put the sample and you know because we didn't have the ADB so me and Colin no. we're geeky enough to sort of like be able to tell what the percentage of something is you know it's you, you guys didn't taste it you, you opened it you smelt it and you went that's it we want it yeah basically. you only tasted it when we got out the mine to confirm we were a bit drunk yeah <laughs> <laughs> um well you know it, it, your nose is the most uh, it, it's a very powerful you know your nose palate and finish they're there for a reason whenever you see tasting notes on whiskey you know, your nose is very powerful sensory, especially when it comes to high ABV proof drinks, you know? And that's what we often tell people, look, start with your nose. And if you can't tell anything, the first taste test me and Joy do for all our car samples is we get them all lined up and we go the nose all the way down. And we see, you know, what the differences is and do what stands out, you know? The guys, the story behind this is we arrived the first day and we were in the forest warehouse and we went through and we picked up a couple of cars and we went into it just now. And then we, we drank the bar drop and then we went into town. And then the next day we went down the mine and you were looking for something specific. And when you found this, you went, that's what we want. Yeah. We, amazing. You know, because we had the day before, obviously, when we got, I mean, the other two cars to taste today, the Cloudberry and the PX, we wanted something. We didn't want to go back with something that we've had before. And we, the reason we went to McMira is because your cast program. So we're like, just want something out of the blue, fucking weird, just can't get anywhere else. So when we put it, our name on it, and like it's got, you know, Milroy's, yeah, it's got our name on it, it's got your name on it. We wanted someone to go, you know what, that's weird and wonderful. That's the whole point of why we went to Mamma. We want something weird and wonderful that people hadn't had before. Because, you know, we're not pumping out, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars a year for Milroy's, and we're not partnering with people to do it. We would rather go that duration you know, our, putting all our expertise and knowledge into the bottle and finding those unique whiskies to give people. That's what our job is, you know. Yeah. And I mean, you've got 48 bottles. That's all it is. You know, it's not yeah. it's not 400 bottles. No, that's it. <laughs> you know, and it's a one-off. Yeah, that's it. When it's, it's done, it's done. That's it. Yeah. Because that cast will carry on aging. It's going to taste very different to it now. Personally, I think it's done. It's beautiful where we got it. Yeah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Funny that. <laughs> it is the best when we got it. Um, number, what are we moving on to? Uh, we are moving on to number one. So, number one, everybody. Numeral. Number one. So, number one. This is, I fell in love with this. This, I just want everyone to wash your water. If you've got the glass, wash out water and just sit and smell this whiskey. Yeah. And Simo, there's a story behind this one as well. So, Cloudberry Wine. Um, it's because I remember right, Cloudberry Wine's only exclusively made in Sweden, isn't it? So, of course, we're not going to find this anywhere else. And I think you were talking about it before we went away. And me and Jolin, we did this is the one cast that we wanted to find. We wanted to find a really good Cloudberry Wine. But we've tried a lot of wine casts in Scotch, and they are fantastic, but a lot of them are hit and miss. This, now this is a testament to your fermentation times. So, you know, you have insane, look at the note, these guys do four to 96 hour fermentation times, and it goes up a lot more in the winter. Now, the longer you ferment, like, all your fermentation times, so Glenfiddich do sort of like 40 hours, the longer the fermentation times, the sweeter the liquid comes out of it, that softer, more fruitful flavor. So if you've got these really long, fermentation times oh, and finding the right cask afterwards to put that liquid into is very important now for me cloud root wine like this is the note your fermentation time plus your cask selection of this i just sit swirl out around your glass and just get those berries it's just nuts it is incredible oh nhs clap everybody <laughs> i think we just missed it uh, did we miss it oh yeah yeah. Sorry, guys. Hey, guys, so we just cheers to the NHS for all yes. the they're actually doing something. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers cheers to, uh, everyone um, all over the world, here's a cheers to the NHS. Cheers to the NHS. Cheers, NHS. Thank you. Cheers to you. Slanger. But that note is we fell in with it. It's just oh. weird, number one. So it's just very strange, you know. Um, 
it's it's a test. This is a very true test of distillery. Now, when you've got your sort of gravity fed distillery, you're not forcing or pumping anything too hard. Now, anytime you've got quartz or like there's a wash or anything in spirit, anytime you start pumping it through stuff, copper contact will strip away anything. It's just metal on spirit, it will start stripping away molecules. So, what we do uh, with yours, because you're not forcing it through, uh, you know, you're not forcing it from one room to another, it's going down it's seven stories high. This is the you know, you're going from the seven all the way down, fermentation to the third level, and then it distillation to the second level. Once it gets to that point, the barley, everything, the, fer the ferment, the quartz, it's not been forced for anything. So it's just still kept that lovely, light, fruity style liquid. Mm. Now, when you add it into a glass like cloud cream wine, all it's going to do is emphasize everything. It just, um, I mean, the fact it just works so well together. It does. You know. So there's a story, guys. About so this. Uh, hang on, hang on a second. <laughs> Rich. Yeah. So we're in we're in the forest warehouse, okay? And these two decide, <laughs> you know, we've done this, we need to go and find something else to do. So they wander out the warehouse, leaving me in the warehouse. And then they disappear. I like I can't find them. And then about an hour later, I'm standing outside the distillery. They walk out of Angela's office. Now Angela is our chief nose officer. She is the lady of our town. With these two, with sample, and they said they found another cask. They found a cask in Angela's office and bought it, a Cloudberry cask. So we were, I think we were, because I'm a big fan of Angela. I mean, you know, she is, I mean, God, one of the best females that's out there. She's incredible yeah. what she's done, what she's done for the industry as well. It's just, and she's cool to fuck. Me and her go like a house on fire, you know, I've got a <laughs> ring. me and her go like a house on fire, it's fantastic. And we walked into, basically it was like a mimic of what me and Joyden had when we were. It's just a room full of samples. No tables, no chairs. No, everything chaos. Everything, nothing that's it. And so we went in there. And we were like, look, we want to find some wine. You know, what have you got? And she had about, she was going through about, was about 30 or 40 samples. So me and Johnny were sat there. And I think we must have had a, tried about a good 20 or 30 of them. Um, just literally sat there drinking them, going through away, tasting the finite differences, checking on ABV cask, where it was stored. And then we sort of picked on this, like, um, this comes out about 55, 54% of that. Um, check. Yeah, that's right. It's, uh, it's fifty-two point six percent. So and sixty bottles. Yeah, so it was high enough for us that we could get something out of it. Um, you know, and also the beauty about this is adding water to it really, really helps. Now, if you add water to any whiskey, it causes an exothermic reaction. This water is a polar molecule, so if you add water to it, it causes an exothermic reaction. It strips off the ends of the alcohol chain. So to make this your better from the start, it shouldn't have alcohol. So. It strips off the ends of these chains, brings out the lighter, fruitier notes. Now, this works. Now, so for us, it's important to have it in the past. So you still get that. Adding water, it can take a lot of water, but it's already fruity to begin with. So a few water, it can just go boom. That was just fantastic. It blows up. But how, 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 did you, how did you meet Angela? Because one minute you were in the distillery with me, and then next minute you were gone. And then you... I mean, you just we were, come back with Angela. I mean, we. Uh, I mean, this is our. Well, me and Jolly like to wander. <laughs> you know, we. Um, the one thing we hate whenever we go to distilleries is the uh, the boring tours, like it's yeah. the, the, what I call the, the tourist tours, like because we, we we you know Vasanet, we've done a lot of them. We, all we want to see is where your cast are kept or new spirit, you know, your your group bit. We want to see that, taste that, drink that. We, that's how we decide to whisk it. You know, we're not, you know, there's a lot of beautiful echoes and this and the other. All we want to see is the hardcore, just like what it is, what it's made, how it's made, and that's it. All about all the lights. Um, and so we like to just kind of want that <laughs> <Just> <laughs> a little bit. Um, and so, um, yeah, I think we're in your office, and I think you kind of make a phone call. We're like, oh, what are we sat in this? And we go, just go for a little water. And just look, open up a door and just call Andrew, like, hey, how are you? I recognize it's like, we're really cool. I was like, what are you doing? It's like, Let's go outside. Do you want to join? It's like, yeah, come in. It's a great afternoon. Actually. It was uh, yeah. fabulous. Yeah, and absolutely nuts, and a great whiskey. Yeah, very cool. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Well, lovely. Love that. That just keeps going. That it does. It just, and it's different, isn't it? Yeah. It's uh, 
Yeah, it was something unique about it. Delicious. I remember trying the car samples in Agnes' office, and I was like, this is so unique. And um, I, I kind of fell in love with it. And of course, you know, I, I'm very enthusiastic about whiskey, and so is Jordan. We get to geek out a lot. But seeing her enthusiasm to whiskey yeah. was just, yeah. it's very nice to see, like, um, you know, someone that, you know, we just go on the geek huge chat and start talking so beautiful about whiskey. It's amazing. You know, anyone that's been to my bar, chat to my bar, stuff, you know, these guys, they just love to chat whiskey. That's what yeah. they love to do. And, yeah. um, it was, it was a beautiful thing when we were talking to her and uh, I really yeah. enjoyed it. Anyone that goes to the dairy should definitely just go, just go buy her a drink. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> the nice thing is, you know, go about, she go knock on her office. <laughs> <laughs> she, she doesn't normally accept visitors, but you know, with you two, she made an exception and it, it turned out really great. Thank you. No, it was, um, it was absolutely, it was truly our pleasure. It was very yeah. good. Right. So third dram. Third one, number three. So, this is the PX cask. The best. Oh, you love this one, don't you? <laughs> uh, I think this is the winner. So, for me... This will be the fourth I've, time for me trying it. So, I, I've tried a, a lot of PX casks, like, in my life, through Milroy's, through Supplies, through own single casks. And um, when I went there, um, obviously, I, I was very adamant that I was the PX 30 litre. I was very adamant that I was wanting some of the cask. Um, for like that big sherry that you get from the X. So we must have tried about um scratch noise there. Um I think I must have tried about twenty PXs in there. I think we opened up quite a few. Um but this really takes the cake, really. Lovely raisin cake. This for me again coming out at fifty point four percent. Opens up really well with water, but I like to tell you to try it about water first. Oh, that's what you really get those big, bold, sort of like almost nutty, crazy notes come through there. Oh, it's beautiful. You know, it's, lovely, yeah. it's only been the cask for, God, what's well, too bad? <laughs> it's a young cask, you know? Yeah. Um, it's, it's 20 months in 30 liters. Yeah, exactly. And this was yeah, for exactly. me, for PX, you know. It's not got that big dark color you get from a big mm. sort of sherry cask, but it's still got those flavors. And that 30 liter cask over that short amount of time really came out. And it was, I really loved it. It was, um, it was pulling the right amount of flavor out, you know, pulling out all those tannins, everything out of it, um, and still keeping that high ABV percentage, but without having that almost, almost treacly you get sometimes. You know, we all love the X cask, but sometimes it can be over, over treated sometimes gets a bit thick in the glass yeah but this yeah. still has all those sort of base heavy notes and those light notes out the x that you get without having that sort of treacly heaviness to the liquid you know? mm. so again guys there's a story behind this so we're in the forest warehouse and they've they haven't really found much and simo walks past this black 30 liter car <laughs> he goes what's in there and the warehouse manager who was with us, patrick the viking goes <laughs> <laughs> he goes, that's PX. <laughs> and you and Jolian, eyes just lit up. Yep. There was like kids in a candy store. And they were like, can we try it? And he said, yeah, why not? It turns out that that cask was owned by his father-in-law. <laughs> you had it. Which, 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 which meant when you bottled it, I had to buy two bottles, one for him and one for me, so he could have one to give to his father-in-law to say sorry. Because you, you, there's Patrick there. I mean, it's something that is great because obviously he'd been keeping it in the right part. Yeah. Of the and, they, <laughs> and when I saw it, I was like, that looks, I, I, I just see, just call, call him out. I was like, that looks fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> you went there looking for a PX as well, didn't you? So the, the yeah, it was one of those things. Like, we had much. sort of a, a dream list before we went out there, you know, and um, PX was definitely on it. Um, was was Cloudberry, Simo, something well, that you went out because you wanted to find something different? We wanted, uh, but did you think that before? Yeah, so we wanted, definitely wanted the Cloudberry because we knew that was exclusive to the region. So we definitely wanted the Cloudberry when we went out there. Um, PX for me, um, it's I wanted a PX, but I wanted, like I said, in the smaller cast. It's something I've not really done before. And that's what I wanted, a big sherry in a small cast, essentially. <laughs> that, that's what I wanted out of it. And, you know, your warehouse provides plenty of that. Um, so, <laughs> you know, so it was like it was like a kid in the candy store, you know. 
<laughs> it was. Them. It was. And, then, and he, he had to ask permission to get so you could get your hands on that card. He had to go to his father and say, listen, I've sold this card. Well, Shane has. And uh, can we sell it? And he said, yes, you can sell it. As long as I get a bottle. So um, I've got a question. Did you try anything Peter would wear that Mac Mirror or were you just looking for unpeated whiskeys? Um, we, when I went out there, we were looking for unpeated. Um, for us, uh, you know, that's because I knew about um, like the way they made whiskey and the fermentation times, the fact that it's very light style whiskey. Um, we, we purposely didn't want to go anything Peter. Like, do you do any Peter over there? Yeah, we do. Yeah, but you're quite a low PPM, aren't you? You're, you're sub 15, aren't you? Or something like that. Quite low. Uh yeah, we sub fifty, but we can we can potentially make the heaviest PT in the world if we wanted to. Yeah, be optimal. <laughs> yeah, um, more than optimal. Yeah, I mean, for me, when I went out there, we, we didn't we, we tried some. It was very nice, but for me, to, the the best of Mac Mirror for me is you know playing on that fruity style liquid. They they're so well at doing over there. So I wanted something you know when me and Jordan out there that you know would uh, I don't know play well with that. And so that the casks and the liquid we chose were purposely like what I call yeah. pinnacle of Mac Mirror. I think the three casks we've got in front of us now, you know, that's for me is the pinnacle of what Mac Mirror's custom is. You know, it's uniqueness, it's weird, it's wonderful. That's it. You've chosen three <laughs> um, very good examples. I'll say that. Yeah, exactly. I've enjoyed three tonight. Yeah, yeah. But Simo, we didn't stop there. We went on, we've got a beer start cask we that is lying down there. And we've got an anniversary cast that you and Jolan filmed and you tampered with it. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and they, what they? <laughs> they tampered with it. Tampered. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, well, they wanted one of them had a straw at the other end and we're just well, sort we, of sucking a, it out. Um, and I'm went standing in. On, I think I was standing on this, I don't know, trying to get out of this. But uh, did we mix, did we get two distillates together? We did a percentage of distillates together, didn't we? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going, it's either A or B. B. Like we got in, had a glass of it. We picked up a glass of each of this stuff. And we were like, actually, 30% of that, 70% of that would work really well. <laughs> so we just got the two distillates and just mixed them together in the cask. It's nuts. <laughs> Because <laughs> so they, they got an anniversary cast, which is the bourbon cast with the with the Swedish top and bottoms, right? And they filled it up with <coughs> with liquid, and then they got peaty, and they thought, right, we'll just throw a wee bit of that in there and mix it in. Then they knocked the fucking and said, right, leave it there. Amazing. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, because you were well, the plan is we had to wait for someone to go around because we weren't really supposed to do that, I think. But then no. they, they, you had the pub these cars, it's an old school pub, and it's just pumping out like a petrol pub. <coughs> like, and Joe and spoken <laughs> everywhere, remember? Yeah. So it we went everywhere. Around, man, like just drinking it, you know, as you do. <laughs> um, drinking it like 70 or percent. Yeah, you because know, why not? We're in Sweden. It's great. It's <laughs> in the it forest. Was great. And, um, so, so, <laughs> Go on, mate. So, <coughs> sorry, I got a frog. When when are you planning to bottle those? Um, what we could tell from because I remember the cask we got and everything there. Uh, I think we're going to leave it for a few years. Um, okay. My view is about five years, I think, in that size cask because uh, there we did actually put a tiny bit of smoke in there, didn't we? Like because yeah. uh, juniper, you do your juniper branch smoke. Um, so we did actually do a tiny bit of smoke in there, but it's not really to create a smoky whiskey. It's more of the marrying effect of the wood. Um, so that's, that's, right. that's what I want to do. So the whiskey won't technically come out smoky, no, or come out uh, with that much of the other distillate in there. It's gonna, it's gonna create like um, uh, almost like a meatiness, like a, a false meatiness, because your you whiskey's not a meat, so it's, it's a false meatiness below, and that's what the, the smoke provides to it. So you know that, that that's the reason we put it in there. Um, you know, it's gonna come out fantastic, I think. <laughs> it's gonna be incredible. And and the beer start cost was a test cost that we were using. You guys tried yeah. it, and we, we'll be having one of those. Yeah, I remember that. You had about ten. No, but you had yeah, five, like just in a row. There wasn't wasn't a lot there. Yeah, it was from a was it a local producer that you had? Correct. It was a local beer producer, and you went, we'll have one of those. You know, and and yeah. Fabulous. I can't wait to taste that one, I must tell you. Well, two more. Co I think the beer stout one we're going to pull out next year. I've not tried any of that. I think the, the, the bourbon we're going to save for a while. So, yeah. we got another one coming soon. <laughs> and if you fly me over again, Shane, we can do this all again. 
Richard, you can go. <laughs> I love you, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll drink it before 10 hours. I'll go. I'll go. I think um, uh, yeah. I need to go. Yeah, it's... It's, it's a fun trip uh definitely i mean uh it was beautiful. i mean sweden's such a beautiful place anyway i mean anyone else not being go there it's uh, i remember driving to the distillery it's about an hour and a half drive isn't it yeah the airport. and um you guys actually i remember the one fact you told me that you guys it's your biggest export is paper but yeah. so good at making paper that you actually year on year you have more trees than when you started with because your growing program is so good that it is. you know you can produce that much paper but every year you have more and more trees in Sweden. Yeah. So it's a very it's really thing. It's uh it just proves it works. Yeah. 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 So so Mark, I'm gonna I'm gonna get you because there's been a lot of people say, please can we have a pizza one? <laughs> I can do a pizza whiskey. I'll have to go I'll have to fly out there again. Just... Yeah, we'll have to do it. Good excuse. Um, Perfect. Oh pizza style. Can you imagine? That'd be fucking weird. It'd be, it'd be really interesting, <laughs> wouldn't it? <laughs> it's out of bonkers and uh, innovative. Call it innovative. That's a good word for it. Yeah. Um, can someone ask Gareth about? Can someone ask Simo? What's that about? Uh, uh, why doesn't the discount code? Uh, oh, Gareth, by... Rich, stop. Rich, um, leave your computer. So it should be if you buy all three, you get a discount. Um, although if the discount work doesn't work with anybody. Um, uh, but if it doesn't work and you still buy it, um, just put a note in the order that the discount code doesn't work, and then I'll get in contact with you tomorrow, and I'll, I'll sort you out. Um, take that off you guys, and I'll, I'll send it back to you. It's all good. It can be done very easily on our system in the shop. So if you just say discount code doesn't work, just let me know, and then what I'll do is I'll go onto our back end and just refund the money. By the time the money comes out of your account and goes to ours, it'll be the same anyway. And that's good service. Great so. technical people at all. At Milroy. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> at some point, do you have a lot left, or or, or is it numbers dwelling? Um, what do we have? Um, so we have God. Last time I checked, of the packs of three, um, we have uh, about four of those. We have, I think it's uh, about 13, 14 of these. That's um, the best. The BX, the Cloudberry, we have about seventeen left. And right. the um, champagne from Kube Cast, we have about 10 left of this. Um, we had about 60 of each to start yeah. um, before this event. Uh, obviously, a couple of bottles went to say stage, but it's, I mean, we've probably barely launched it. People have just got mad. I've, I've used it on the tastings as well. People are just laughing and stuff at the moment. Um, it will all be gone by the weekend. So get it when you can. <laughs> Frankie's just said he's brand new to Mac Mirror and he's hooked. We'd love to know notice more about the brand. Frankie, yeah, come on to www.macmirror.co.uk. You can find out anything you want about Macmira. Very cool story. And we also do um, we also do broadcasts every Thursday though, Shane, right? So uh, if yeah. Frankie wanted to join us next Thursday at 5 p.m. At 5 p.m. we'll be on and yeah. um, we'll do a week weekly show on Thursdays. Um, we can come and, and find out a little bit um, about Macmira as we go as well. So do some research in the meantime, but come and join us next week. Yep. And so I, I have a list of people who send their regards from John in Italy, who was the brand manager with me. He's, he sends regards. Angela sends her regards. Patrick says, I hope you keep him well and still stealing whiskey. From Torvald. <laughs> <laughs> Torvald says hi. And Magnus says hi as well. So you, you've got a bit of a fan club in, in Sweden. So they all send their regards. Uh, we're very, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we lovable like, rogues yeah we, with this much hair on my face and like ink on my skin you know me and Johnny and, uh, and our drinking habits we tend to make a, a good or a bad impression but definitely an impression when we go away <laughs> <laughs> um, CPM whoever that is is looking to buy a cost get in touch with us get on our website get hold of John get hold of me get hold of, of, of Richard we'll help you get a sort of cost out we have a ready cost as well. The ready cost program is a little bit more expensive, but you can bottle it now and we'll deliver it to you all in. That's duty, uh, labeled, uh, delivery, and uh, to your doorstep. So, yeah, if you want to know more information, give us a shout. Simo, thank you very much. Um, it's been awesome as always. Um, love having you on the show. To everybody out there who, um, who joined us tonight, uh, thank you very much. Um, 
love having you guys and nice to hear all the comments and see everybody's here i just wanted to say something somehow from my side um everybody i ever meet in the industry is either worked at milroy's was trained at milroy's or knows milroy's so uh <laughs> you're doing something right mate and uh it's all we're doing is trying to carry on a little bit of history to be honest it's um you know it, it's you know I, I bought a place revitalized it but it's not just me it's all my every member of my staff are absolutely fantastic and uh yeah, shout out to all my staff watching yeah. uh, you guys are we'll be back in Cheers. the bar again soon i promise yeah uh, um, but yeah my guys my there you go they're my team my family these are some of the greatest people i've worked with in my life and um you know i, I couldn't ask for a better team and it's uh it's all down to them really you know i just kind of you know, drink at the bar and uh, these guys by the bar they're absolutely fantastic and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really friendly really. friendly knowledgeable so yeah. happy to help and, and just uh, love with that's it yeah that's, that's all yeah, you yeah. gotta do they don't try and sell you rubbish they're not no. trying to do any marketing thing or anything like that you know you can't buy us you know that's the one dude thing we have no contracts with anybody you know you can't that's right you can't have contracts like oh you if you if you will give you a price on this you have to put this on and sell this like we don't do that we don't have to we don't we're independent. We have been for us. We have a bunch of It's not. No, we're not being told by anyone else what to do. It's all our own expertise, and it's all my starting management knowledge. To have that whiskey on the shelf. And you know, somehow it's um, um, a great privilege, and, and I love going into Mulroy. It's my favourite bar in London, uh, and uh, and. Uh, you guys have always made me feel welcome, and, and, and I thank you for your support. And it, it, you know, it's uh, it's a great privilege to be part of the family. And uh, thank you very much. And thank you for your time. And, and thank you to our audience tonight. Thank you very much, guys. And Richard, thank you. Thanks for coming on. And right, uh, uh, a quick glass, Slange of Bath. Yeah. If I get the pot. Yeah. Do a quick glass. Everyone cheers in there. Yeah. Everyone cheers. Get a picture. Hang on a sec. Let me get mine. <laughs> Hold on. <It's> bad. <laughs> Here we go. Ready? There we are. Cheers, Skull. guys. Take care, guys. All, right. <laughs> All the best. Cheers. Bye. Skull.